Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 4 StarCraft 2 Strategy. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Zerg strategy. In this particular replay, our Zerg player is Nest T, and our Protoss opponent is NEX Genius. So we're going to go into Nest T Vision, Nest T, an excellent beverage on a hot summer's day. So anyways, uh, Zerg strategy today, what we're going to be looking at is a pretty standard unit composition in Speedlings and Mutalisks. Uh, this is a pretty standard build for Zerg players, especially against Terran and Protoss opponents. Uh, in this particular replay, again, it is a Protoss opponent that we're facing. But more specifically, there's a few aspects of this game that I'm going to be touching on today. Um, initially, that early game forward scouting with Zerglings, um, and basically allowing you to drone up heavy with a fast expansion early in the game, and not worry about making offensive units in the Zergling until you see an opponent pushing out. Um, with forward scouting with those Zerglings you can safely drone up uh, and not worry too much about attack unless you see it coming and then at that point spend your larva on army units whether it be Zerglings or roaches or, or whatever you may be going for. Um, and then later in the game we're going to be looking at effective counterattacks by using the speed of those speedlings as well as uh, the speed and mobility of mutalisks. Uh, you can effectively really push out against your opponent if they attack you and hit their econ and also kind of force them to either draw back or push all in. Now the good thing is that with the speed and mobility of those mutalisks you can successfully do uh, quite a bit of damage to their economy and then pull out whenever they come to try to engage a mutalisk. And that's kind of the theory and the idea behind using the speed of those Zerg units. Now as far as the opening build order, pretty standard stuff here. Starting off with a 14 extractor, then getting that 13 spawning pool. This is going to allow us to research that speed upgrade, uh, the metabolic boost, as soon as that spawning pool is done. Moving out with our first initial two overlords, uh, we're going to be trying to get a clamp on our opponent's base. This is going to allow for additional uh, early to mid game and late game scouting as well. Uh, basically that's a really good idea. Essentially what you want to do, especially on these 1v1, these uh, two player maps, send out those first two overlords to either corner of your opponent's base. Uh, this is going to be very beneficial to you. And now as you can see that spawning pool has just popped and we immediately did go for that speedling research, that metabolic boost. As you can see at this point too, uh, Nesty has pulled two of the drones off of his extractor, down to only one drone. Now we still do want to get Vespian because we do plan to tech up to a layer eventually, but at this point in the game we're definitely going to be looking to work on our economy. That's generally the idea, that's what we're going to be going for. Uh, now we did create these first two initial Zerglings and we do also have this queen on the way. And uh, now we started getting that queen at 16 supply. The metabolic boost came up again right when the spawn pool had hatched at 18 supply. And then the 19 supply is when we went with this hatchery. So concentrating uh, really on our minerals early in the game because we want to be able to drone up pretty hard. We also want to be able to get this expansion, be able to afford this expansion pretty early in the game. Um, just sticking with this one because what we're going to be looking to do is once we do finally reach our 100 Vespian, we're going to be switching this up to a layer. Um, but again, going for that mineral heavy as opposed to getting that Vespian faster for the very reason of being able to drone up and afford this expansion. So here we go. As you can see, we were moving out with our Zerglings. We do want to kill, kill this scouting probe here um, as soon as possible and then after that point we're going to move out to the front of our opponent's base and we're going to be taking a look at that forward scouting that I had talked about at the very beginning of this video. Now the expansion is just about up and we're going to be wanting to have a second queen as well so we did start building that second queen at 20 supply that way we do have a queen for each of our mains, the um, well the main and the natural rather. Now moving forward with these speed links, the speed link upgrade has just finished um, taking advantage of their mobility to get that forward scouting and basically what you want to do is poke and prod at the front of your opponent's base and see when they're pushing out and if they're expanding and in particular what they're doing their unit composition um, if they're looking to be aggressive or if they're going for more of a defensive measure now, if you're afraid that you're gonna, not going to be able to effectively do this and keep up your macro, just even spotting your Zerglings, like placing one uh, here and then placing one at the Zelnaga Tower, this is going to give you that same information as far as when, or, when they're going to be pushing out. And it's going to allow you to safely drone up like we're doing here. As you can see, basically just spending all of these resources on drones. Um, now, here comes that layer. Again, we were sticking with that 
one drone on that extractor for the most part. Um, and now that we had, as soon as we got enough, we did go ahead and switch up to a layer. And at this point, we're going to be getting as much Vespine as possible because we're going to be switching it to Medus, like I mentioned earlier. Now, as you see here in this forward scouting with these Zerglings, moving them around, uh, taking advantage of their speed and mobility, we do see this expansion coming down for our opponent. Now, if you see that expansion going down, you can safely continue to drone up. At that point, you really don't have to worry about an aggressive attack from your opponent. And with these forward scouts here, um, you can see if anything is coming and then just build up units if it does. Now that that layers up, we're going to be dropping that spire immediately, um, saturating these extractors uh, as soon as we can. We do have these second secondary extractors going up here um, at our natural as well. Those came up at 35 and 44 supply respectively, and that spire did come up at 46 supply, and that was basically just as soon as that layer had finished. The exact supply isn't so much as important as when we did it. We did it immediately. We made sure we had just enough Vespian to do it immediately after this layer was done. And this is one of the great things about Zerg. Um, Zerg is one of one of the tougher races in the fact that you do have to make that decision between using your larva for workers or using your larva uh, for offensive units. Now, with that, you have to really do this sort of um, play style in scouting forward and knowing what your opponent's doing at all time, uh, taking advantage of the overlords, taking advantage of the speedlings near your opponent's base. Uh, and this is going to allow you to safely work on your economy and then only build units when you have to. Now what we're going to be doing is, as you can see, we have been saving up our Vespian here. And it looks like, I mean, you can see we have just enough as soon as that Spire finishes to build uh, eight Mutalisks right away. Now the exact number of Mutalisks isn't important, but the fact that you're going to be saving up your Vespian uh, for right, right when the Spire finishes. So you can do a nice, solid, hefty group of Mutalisks uh, as soon as possible. Usually somewhere between 5 and 10 is a good number. That's something to shoot for. Um, and the, the higher up you can get, obviously, the better, because the larger group of mutilists that you have, the more damage you're going to be able to do when you swoop in. And essentially what we're going to be looking to do is just straight-up economy harassment here. Um, as you can see, since we haven't seen much of an offensive from our Protoss opponent, we do want to expand. Uh, a general good rule of thumb as Zerg is to always have one more expansion than your opponent. Uh, this is going to provide you with enough larva and enough of an economy to keep up with them um, in their two or three base or whatever they happen to be going for. So we're going to take advantage as best we can of the mutilist mobility. We're going to be moving in, picking off workers, and then pushing out as soon as they move forward to engage. Uh, in a straight up battle, we, you will not do very well against stalkers and sentries, especially with that guardian shield. Drastically reduces the amount of damage that those mutilists do, um, especially that glaive damage. The the splash damage that it does when it hits additional units if that guardian shield is up it's pretty much nullified at that point so you do just want to move around and poke at parts that aren't defended of his base so for example we hit this main here he moved most of his forces over there a good a good idea would to be swoop back around and then try to hit the natural if he moves to the natural and swoop into his main hit the main and just try to do as much economic damage as possible um, also going to be going for these upgrades again we do still have the zelnaga tower here as well as this forward zergling so we know that they're not pushing out at this point feel pretty safe to not have to spend all of our resources on offensive units like Spielings and Mutilus. We're getting these upgrades here, uh, we're getting the attack upgrade, um, and we're also going to be following that up with the Carpus upgrade, the, their Carapus or something along those lines. I'm going to get made fun of for mispronouncing that word, but that is fine by me. Uh, so as you can see, with those forward Zerglings, we did see that a push is coming. Now immediately at, at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to make units to defend. We've got these Zerglings coming, we also have these Mutalists coming. Um, now again, in a straight up battle, you're not going to do very well with Mutalists, um, especially with that Guardian Shield active. So keep that in mind. If you get pushed out against, and it's not going to be something that's going to completely cripple you, if you have enough of your base um, in terms of uh, some spine crawlers and some zerglings, move out with your mutilus and use them for a counterattack. This is going to be absolutely vital. If you can manage to do enough economic damage to him with the speed and mobility of your mutilus, uh, then you are going to be in a very great position. Now, maybe initially there is that threat of him taking out your base when he pushes forward, but again, with these defensive structures in the spine crawlers and having some speedlings in your base, you should be pretty safe uh, from any attack that you're going to be seeing. Uh, move into their base, pick off any key buildings, take out as much of their economy as possible, and it's going to very much inhibit their ability to progress further in the game. Because um, essentially what you're going to be doing is in taking out their economy, uh, you're not going to 
provide them with the resources, they're not going to have the resources necessary to keep producing an army large enough to deal with what you have. Uh, and that's essentially the idea behind this type of build. Uh, you, you fly in, you poke, you do harassment, you do counterattacks, you take advantage of the speed of your units, um, because in a straight up battle, speedlings and mutilists will not do very well against a zealot, stalker, sentry army. It just isn't the case. Um, you don't really have the firepower necessary and your units are quite quite fragile in comparison to the units that they have so you just want to harass you want to hit their economy enough and often enough and um, with strong enough force and do enough damage so that after that point they have to concentrate on drones and if they don't then they're so far behind an economy uh, that they can't keep up with you and with the amount of forces that you have um, a good idea too is to do a uh, doubly pronged attack um, hitting the expansion with the speed links and the main with the mutilus kind of divide your opponent's attention um, do what you can for economic damage, and then pull out once his forces come in to engage. Uh, now, if you were paying attention to the mini-map there, um, our opponent, our Protoss opponent, was looking to move forward. He did have units uh, that were pushing forward against us, but because we hit him in both directions with these Mutilus at his main and those Speedlings at his expansion, he was forced to pull back, because otherwise we would have just wiped him out before he could do anything. And then in kind of a central location, uh, taking advantage of these spine crawlers, a nice good static defense. The one thing you're really going to have to worry about is a DT as the game progresses later on um, against a Protoss opponent. So make sure you do have some overseers um, available to defend against that because that could definitely be a problem. And I know it's um, being very redundant in this, but this is essentially the type of play style that you're going to see is uh, moving in, doing harassment, and pulling out. Moving in, doing harassment, and pulling out. Um, now here are those DT that I did mention that could be very dangerous, so do make sure that you have an overseer on the board. All you need is an overseer, especially since you have these mutilists here. It's not like you have to worry about the DT hitting the mutilists, because that is not a possibility. Uh, take advantage of these Zelnaga Towers whenever po possible. Zerglings being so cheap at 25 minerals per, um, you can definitely afford to keep one Zergling at each Zelnaga Tower. And then, of course, you don't necessarily have to lose them because if you're paying enough of attention and you see units moving in towards your Zergling at the Zelnaga Tower, you can just pull them away before they get to the range that they can engage your unit. Um, it's definitely a smart idea. So, again, we're doing the exact same thing that we've been doing all game, pulling in, hitting his economy, and then moving out once he moves in forces. Uh, and we're going to continue to do this because it will continue to be effective. Now, the other great thing about the speed and mobility um, of these units, of the Speedling and the Mutilus, is it really does force your opponent... Um, um, into a contained sort of position. As you can see, he is pushing out against us, but it's it's at a disadvantage to him because he's going to be taking significant damage back at his base. You can see we've already taken out his main nexus. We're going to be taking out his uh, warp gates as well, taking out that dark shrine, and his attack isn't doing as effectively. It's doing pretty well with these DT here, and this is specifically why you do want to make sure you have a few overseers and at least a few units back of your base. Um, even in counterattacking, you do want to make sure you have a, at least some sort of a force to help defend with these static defenses. Um, but taking a look back at his base, yes, he is pushing in here, but back at his base, we took out so much now. And at this point, we're really at threat of losing our base here. And if you do get to that point, um, hold back on your counterattack, bring your units back, and then wait to engage. This is the most important part. Wait in to engage until the majority of your forces are here. As you can see, we held those feelings back in our main base and didn't move into our natural until a mutilus had arrived. Um, and as you can see, also bringing some drones into the fray, um, doing as much damage as possible, trying to take them out. And they simply do not have enough units to be able to handle this. Um, now, I can hear, hear the cynics already. They may say, well, that Protoss player was terrible. Uh, he had so few units. The key thing to note here is the reason he did not have, the reason the Protoss opponent did not have lots of units in this attack is because he just simply did not have the economy to do so. Um, moving into his uh, mineral line multiple times throughout the games with those speed links and with those meterless, we had done so much economic damage that they were unable to have the resources necessary to sustain a large enough army to deal with what we had. So once again, we're going to take a look at the build order here. Uh, we started off pretty standard with that 14 extractor and 13 pool, allowing us to get that speedling upgrade right away. 16 supplies when we got that queen. 18 supplies as soon as that spawning pool was up, getting that metabolic boost. 19 supply going for our fast hatchery. Now with that metabolic boost, we did pull back drones off of our extractor to concentrate on our mineral gathering. That allowed us to drone up very hard, taking full advantage of all those minerals that we had. 20 supply, we get our second queen so that we could have a queen at each one of our hatcheries. 35 supplies when that layer came. As soon as we started building that layer, we 
went ahead and saturated our extractors as well as the extractors that we had at our natural there. And then at 46 supply is when we went ahead and got our spire. If your Protoss opponent has this type of unit composition um, with those sentries and stalkers, do not engage them head on with the immutalist. Just do the damage, pull out, and then go back in when it's safe again. So once again, guys, this has been for StarCraft 2 Strategy. If you guys like our videos and you like what we're doing here, please do go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Keep watching and keep owning, guys.